No, the eyes have it. I call on Government Order of the Day number two. Gaming Amendment Bill number three interrupted debate on first reading. Uh, when this debate was last adjourned, um, the Honourable Peter Dunn has, uh, was speaking and has five minutes thirty seconds. Should he Mr. Receive? Speaker, when I was speaking at the, the Honourable Peter Dunn the other night, I was talking about some of the provisions of the new bill insofar as they relate to conflicts of interest. I've spoken about uh, the, the needs to capture people who might be at the periphery of a venue's operations but have a significant role within it. I've also talked about key people who might be able, in a position to receive benefits from uh, any of the organisations in which they were involved. But I want to move on from there, sir. One of the more significant changes that this bill introduces is the prohibition of any money, gifts or benefits between societies and venues, aside from those legitimately paid through the venue cost payment system. The bill is intended to help clamp down on unhealthy competition for high turnover venues around the country. In fact, societies for some time have been accusing each other of offering these venues various sweeteners over and above what is legally payable in order to persuade them to sign up and to host their gaming machines, and this bill seeks to address that concern. The bill also makes a change in the area of compliance costs by allowing the Secretary for Internal Affairs to issue licences for gambling operators that last up to three years rather than just the current 18 months. That will require the, the, the less frequent requiring of uh, renewals will act as a reward for compliance and it will help also to reduce operator costs. And I think that has the potential to be a benefit for the department in its role as the regulator because its workload on licensing renewals could well substantially uh, reduce as a consequence. Mr Speaker, the bill also removes the requirement for societies to publish grant information in at least one newspaper, which can be costly. I'm sure we, could, we all recall these big full-page spreads in national newspapers on occasions. But today, information can be far more readily obtainable and available. It can be more comprehensive and more accessible if it's published on a website. And so the changes that the bill contemplates would encourage greater flexibility in the publication of grant information to better meet the changing needs of particular stakeholders. And the final part of the bill, Mr Speaker, is to streamline the appeals framework under the Gambling Act. Societies have the right of appeal to the Gambling Commission against the Department's decision to suspend, cancel, not issue or not renew Class 3 and 4, class li and four, class three and four licences. Uh, when the Commission was established back in 2003, one of its purposes was to be a specialist body that can consider appeals. So what the Bill does is uphold that by allowing an affected party to seek a judicial review, but only after that party has exercised its right of appeal to the Gambling Commission and that appeal has been finally to determine. Uh, Mr Speaker, I said at the introduction the other night that this Bill is an important step in an ongoing series of measures to restore greater public confidence in the gambling sector. We know that Class 4 generates many hundreds of millions of dollars every year. Uh, most of that money is ploughed back into the community. What this bill is about ensuring is that the maximum amount of money is ploughed back and that it goes to the right places. We're also looking, therefore, in the bill at decision-making and grant-making processes and tightening up parts of the Act that potentially have the opportunity for dishonest arrangements or where personal gains from gambling are sought. Both of those activities are clearly unacceptable. Now, the bottom line very simply is this. The public of New Zealand, when they pay their uh, fee to take part, need to be assured that those who are involved in operating this type of gambling are doing the right thing and that the gambling funds are being used for what they were intended, namely the community need. So, Mr Speaker, I am very comfortable commending this bill to the House and I look forward to the House's support of it. I call the Honourable Ruth Dyson. Um, Mr Speaker, can I 